Hello and welcome to this video. It's only been a week, but we've had even more changes in QuickBox. So let's have a look at them. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick, Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also that QuickBox chap. In today's video, QuickBooks has treated us with yet more updates. So big kudos to Intuit themselves for getting some more updates over to us. And actually, they've listened to one of my previous videos and implemented those changes straight away. Obviously not. But it's still nice to see that there's some updates that we were asking for, or we were at least talking about, and they've appeared. So let's have a quick dive into these new changes and how they can affect you and your business. So the first change is about us as accountants. So we're going to have a quick look at that in our QBOA dashboard. Well, in the QBO dashboard, you'll notice we have this new section here, overview and bookkeeping. When I click on the bookkeeping tab, it's now going to give us an indication of how our month end reviews are doing. So if you remember in my last video about month end reviews, I said that I would really appreciate if we had a way of being able to see the progress of the month end reviews. And that's exactly what we've just got. And this is brilliant. This gives us the opportunity to be able to go through our clients and see which clients we've actually been able to complete the month end review and which ones we still haven't completed them for. So that gives you a bit of a workflow solution there where you can actually see at a glance which clients you still need to complete the workflow for maybe before an end of a month and which ones you've already completed. Also, now we've got the opportunity to put into leads as well, means that you can dish out who's responsible for each, each individual month end review. Now, one thing that you can't do here, and I'm sure it's something that will get updated at some point, is you can't search or filter the month end reviews. So depending on how many clients you've got in a typical client list, so in our firm, we've got well over 300 licenses now, it's gonna be really difficult for us to be able to see which, which clients still need to have a month end review. So I think that's something that still needs to have a bit of a tweak on, to be able to make sure that we're actually doing all the month end reviews for all our clients. Okay, the next changes are in QuickBooks themselves. So let's have a look into a file and see what's happened over there. Okay, so the adjustments are now sat in QuickBooks Labs. So if I have a look in my company cog, top right hand corner, company and QuickBooks Labs, you'll notice we've had some new additions to the QuickBooks lab. So first of all, we've now got our QuickBooks dark mode. So following the trend of all software at the moment, where you have the light versus dark versions of the different pieces of software, we can now turn this tag on, that'll activate, and that's now going to activate dark mode. So let's have a look at it. So the next step after that is to go into the top right hand corner and themes, you'll notice now under the your company section, we have a theme section just here. And within the theme section, we can now turn on dark mode. Once we're in dark mode, it does exactly what it says on the tin and it moves everything into dark mode. So this can be useful for people who prefer that dark aesthetic, so that maybe it's more, more suitable for people who maybe work in low light or they're working at night or things like that. And it's all about trying to make sure that is basically protecting your eyes and everything else. If you look into all different pieces of software now, you tend to have an option for dark mode as a option to go through. And this is just Intuit and QuickBooks following suit on that trend. Also in QuickBooks Labs, so again, I'm going to your company and QuickBooks Labs. Also in QuickBooks Labs is the opportunity to turn on this new item here called tags. Now the idea of tags is it gives you the option to have custom labels. So we can read here, tags are customer labels that let you track your money however you want. Now tags themselves remind me a lot like classes and locations, but I do think that it has its own little plate. Class and locations, first of all, you, can, you only get when you're actually on one of the higher tiers of QuickBooks Online, so it's not actually available for every single person. Also, with class and locations, you have to be very strict in terms of what class and locations you can have for, for that particular use case. And normally, you're as a business owner or as an accountant, you've got a use case for those class and locations. So maybe you run in charity or maybe you've got different locations. So you want to start looking at different cost centers. And for classes, it could be that you've got different aspects of your business that you're trying to record. Class and location can give you an opportunity to really go in and be able to create sophisticated reports based on your particular need. And class and location has been around since day one of QuickBooks Online. And it's something that for advanced users, we've really been able to utilize and be able to make particular use cases for. Tags on the other hand, to me, are something that's a little bit more fluid. 
So what I mean by that is it should be an opportunity for clients or for users of QuickBooks to be able to put whatever information relates to it. And what I'm going to be starting to experiment with tags is giving clients the opportunity to be able to highlight particular items that maybe they want me to look at. So it could be an opportunity there where you could use a tag for, for review, for example, to give you an opportunity to then go back in and check that on behalf of your client. Now I've turned tags on and pressed done. What I should find that if I go and create any type of transaction, tags have started to come here. So if I was starting to make a transaction and an expense, um, I obviously I would always have the opportunity to put my category down. So maybe, so maybe I'm doing some telephone or travel expenses and I've got 20%, 20 pound and 20% here. Now with tags here, I can then start adding any type of tag that I would like. So maybe I want to start looking at this tag to start reporting against a particular car. So I could put the registration in. So, so I've got the registration of that car in. I can then start thinking, well, maybe the other thing. And, and that's the other advantage of tags over class and locations, the fact that you can put multiple tags against a single transaction. So you're not just limited to having to pick one or the other. If I can compare my tag section over here to my location section, well, I'd only be able to choose one. So if my location for this one was Derby and my class for this particular line item was, was online, because maybe I have this use case where I need to look at all my different avenues of income and I've got my online income versus my, ex, my physical store and I'm trying to look and see which one's more valuable to me. So class and locations, you're limited to just one of each and you have to pick with one of those particular items. Here I could be like, well, at the same time, I'm not 100% sure I've done this right, so I could put for review. And also I can start adding other bits as well and I've got the opportunity as well to add groups of tags. So maybe I've got a group where, so groups here, you even get to color code the groups and get to put it in, you get to put the name and then you can create a tag for it. So maybe you want a whole group that is for review and I can create that as a tag and I'm gonna put that as green. Tag name is category. And then maybe I want to add another category for review category, but then I want another one that is for review VAT. Manage tags. And maybe I wanna say, actually, I want my VAT to be part of for review. And maybe other parts of the tagging element is attachments needed. And again, let's manage my tags, put it in the for review section, attachments needed, and I wanna add it to my group for review. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating a group that's gonna be useful for me when it comes to reviewing this information. So either as a client or as an accountant, I now have an ability to be able to look at different transactions and see what they are. So in this one, I can see that I still need to put my attachment on it. I still, I'm not 100% sure I've put the right VAT code against it. And from a category point of view, I'm not sure I've chosen the right category. Because when I'm reviewing things, especially in the new month end review, the fact I haven't put a payee here is gonna be highlighted for me. So that's something that's gonna automatically appear in my review section. One thing that I haven't got though, is the ability to know if, it, if I've got maybe attachments in, or if I have the right travel or the right VAT. And this gives me an option to highlight this transaction and put it through there. Plus I can keep going on tags as well. So maybe I'm gonna start looking at putting some other use cases in here. So I'm happy that I'm looking against that particular car, but also I wanna start looking at other aspects of it as well. Maybe I'm starting to look at expenses. So maybe I wanna add an expense, but add it to a group of employee expenses. So then I've got another tag there where I'm starting to put together items that I might want to reimburse my employee. And those are the sort of use cases you can do. You've basically got a transaction there and you wanna put something on there so it's easy for you to find it. As an example, and I've a look at my all lists, I now have a tags list here. And from there, I can see what's part of the group. So here I've got four review and I've got one transaction. And I can drop down here to quickly look at the different groups. So here I've got 24 pound that's still in full review. So now I can find and see that that one transaction may need to have a look at. And maybe I need to go in there and look at that transaction. Another use case I could see for it is if I jump in month end review and I look at maybe final review or account reconciliation, I could add here review tag review and all I do is I copy and paste that link, VAT, 
QuickBooks page link. And then I can put a QuickBooks page link in, maybe details, review, the VAT tags, save. And now I've created a new to-do thing for me so that I can then review the tags if I need to. And I think that could be quite a use case for it as well. Other options for the tagging are things like if you've got R&D clients, that means you can start putting them against the right R&D categories. And maybe for some charities, there may be some use case for it there instead of having to go down classes and locations but I'd be a little bit dubious about relying on tags for that sort of functionality. Overall, tags is gonna give us some other options. So it might be something for us to look at in a little bit more detail and try and find more use cases as we go along. But the fact that it's so fluid and so easy to set up and it's available on everything will make people's lives easier in terms of actually utilizing it and always having it there. And there we have it, some new updates to QuickBooks Online. As you can see, QuickBooks are updating it quite rapidly at the moment, so kudos again to Intuit on that one. And it gives us some opportunities to really look at the information, dive deep into it, and be able to try and extract find and find new use cases for QuickBooks Online. If you like this video and you want to learn more about the new updates, then don't forget we go live every other Tuesday. <clears throat> we go live on a fortnightly basis on Tuesday at 4 p.m., to talk about QuickBooks Labs. And in QuickBooks Labs, this is exactly the sort of information we're interested in. We wanna dive deep into all these little elements and we use QuickBooks Labs as a way to go into it, deep dive into these sort of new ob objections and we talk about it. Also, it gives you the opportunity to ask questions. As we're live, you can put some questions in the question box like you guys already have done and it gives us the opportunity. Big shout out to QuickBooks community on this one because it was you guys who shouted out and pointed in the right direction that these went live. So they only went live yesterday. My name has been Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video for you. And if you do have any more comments or you wanna look at anything in any more detail, or better yet, if you know what tags could be useful for, then please put them in the comments below and we can share that with the rest of it, the rest of the world. My name has been Aaron Patrick. Again, it's been a pleasure to do this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.